What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I got something a little different for you guys. We are going to be going through how to set up your franchise for the most immersive and realistic experience that you can have inside of Madden 23. If you are new here, thanks for stopping by. Consider dropping a like, hitting that sub button. I do a lot of stuff like this. Plus, I also do a long term franchise rebuild, which this will show you exactly how I set mine up and turn that bell notification on so that you know when I upload more and you guys are never missing out on anything that I post. If you are more of a casual franchise player, that's cool for you, but honestly, this might not be the video for you. Uh, there's a lot of extra work that goes into this franchise, and there's a lot of extra leg work that you have to do to maintain the franchise, but if you are somebody who is into that and who wants to do a long-term build and is okay with the extra leg work, I can tell you right now, this is gonna give you a much better experience than what you're currently having with your plain vanilla franchise mode in Madden 23. All right, so let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into it. So the first step, obviously, you gotta go to franchise. The first step here, once you hit create new league, you have to go to the offline file and create it that way. There, You can't do with this online. There's just no way to possibly do this without driving yourself insane. So offline is the best way to go. Plus, when this whole server crazy stuff happens, you don't have to worry about losing some stuff or not being able to access your file. Of course, I'm gonna choose the Vikings. That's my favorite team. And then once we get to this section, this is where the first important step is. You have to go to league settings. And you wanna make sure that your skill level is on set. Everything here is looking the way it is. And there's a couple of things that you do have to make sure are in place before you start your franchise. The first one that you wanna make sure is turned off is practice squad stealing. Now I love practice squad stealing as much as the next guy, but unfortunately Madden does not know how to work this. This year in Madden 23, the entire practice squad will get picked apart as soon as the first week advances. I've seen it happen to myself a couple of times and I, I just don't think it's right. Like I can see maybe a player or two getting snatched from the practice squad, but teams shouldn't be taking entire practice squads from other teams. So leave this off, unless you're okay with that, then go ahead and leave it on. But just to know, if you leave it on, the chances of you having a practice squad player stay on your team is slim to none with how Madden 23 is working right now. I like to keep roster protection at 46. The reason for this is I've noticed when you raise it up to like 50, that the teams will keep seven quarterbacks or seven running backs but then they won't have a backup center. They won't have, um, they'll only have two defensive tackles. They'll, it's just it's just really stupid how they keep the rosters. So if you wanna raise it a little bit, I would say 48, but you will have to probably go through and double check on rosters and who, who the teams have signed to make sure things aren't too crazy for you. For the most part, all of this stuff stays the same because if you do it the way I do it, you're probably gonna handle a good chunk of this yourself and won't have to run into the CPU doing this crazy stuff for you. For the most part, if you're gonna move any one of these, maybe do star, move it up to 500, but try and keep this down below so that you have this group of like 100 some players that just feels special and that's it. Otherwise, if you raise it up to 175, now you got almost 200 players in the league that can have all of these abilities and it, it just, it gets to be too much. Or honestly, this isn't something you have to have if you don't like scenarios or if you don't like abilities go ahead and turn it off it's not going to affect the, the the franchise really that much at all and then you can still just use this for the actual xp gain clock management this is going to be based off of how you run your franchise i myself run 14 minutes and 15 seconds and this is what we use in the rfl and i have adopted it here because i think it does give a really good balance of gameplay but also making sure that there's enough plays called within a game to make it a realistic amount of plays being done and then down here for this, I want all of this stuff on manual, even practice reps. So make sure you go down here and turn on practice reps to manual and then make sure that you turn Phil Rosser off. If you don't turn this off, what's gonna happen is anytime you sign a player, the CPU is gonna automatically, for your team, by the way, cut one of your players, whether it's the guy you just signed or some random that you might not have wanted to to have on. And I also turn the pop-ups off because those are annoying and everybody knows half the stuff already. I personally like to run as the owner. So I will usually do, I mean, you can name yourself. I usually don't, but if you want, go ahead and name yourself. And the reason I liked being an owner, because then I can decide if I want to keep the coach, keep the system, or if I want to change everything up and I want to fire the coach and do all those things. It just adds to the experience that you can have for yourself. So I like to be the owner. 
Again, it's your decision on how you want to handle it. I'm pretty sure about 99% of you watching this video right now have done everything that I already showed you guys, and I know it was sort of mundane, but I wanted to make sure I explained everything. Now that we're in the franchise though, this is where the work starts. So the extra reason that I also do offline, aside from having the ability to play, even if there's online issues, because when you use offline, you can actually make a profile for all of the teams while not even having to sign out of your PSN. And I'll show you how to do that. So first you're gonna do is you're gonna hit the big middle button on your PlayStation 5 controller or whatever one makes the music thing pop up. I'm not sure if you're playing on Xbox, I don't know what button that is, but you wanna hit the button that allows this screen to pop up. And if you scroll over to characters, you'll see this tab here, create new character. And it lets you add more characters to this offline file. Again, this might be something a lot of you know, but I do know that there's quite a few who do not understand you can do this, and it, it's a game changer for franchise for me. So what you're gonna do then is you're gonna basically do this 31 times. Now I'm not gonna show you me doing them all 31, I'm just gonna do one team and I'm gonna show you how I set up every single CPU team, and then it's up to you guys to just repeat that process 31 times, or however many times you plan on doing it. Maybe you only wanna control six teams, maybe you only wanna control eight completely up to you but i do all 31 other teams and this is what i do so i'm going to click on the team again if you want to be the owner you can but you're gonna you might run into issues later if you end up leaving a team you can't rejoin as an owner again so it's up to you owner or coach either way it doesn't matter of course if you do the coach you're never going to have a new coach here it's going to be the same coach for eternity so if you want to be able to make changes for other teams for the coaches you're going to want to make sure you set this up as the owner i'm going to leave it as coach for now because it's not that imperative to what we're doing make sure you go to league settings because this is the next important part for this setup you're going to see that all this stuff is grayed out because your first profile is still the commissioner per se so you're still going to have to be on your main team that you started with to do a lot of these setting changes which is fine but what you need to do is go down here to this user team help. And this is where you're gonna decide how much extra work do you really wanna do? Because you can do full control, you can do, you can customize it, and of course you can do simple. You can get away with using simple on these settings to try and alleviate how much work you have to do, but there is some setup that you should really do with each team before you get to that point. And I'll explain that in just a few seconds here. So we're gonna stick on full control and then it's just really picking and choosing what do you want to have control of. Now, I usually move trades and free agency to auto, off-season free agent bidding to auto, injury management I move to auto, scouting players, league advancement, but then I leave these four as manual. So I'm gonna have weekly training, preseason cut days, contract negotiations, and manage practice reps set to manual. You can also decide if you want to have Phil Roster on or off. Considering you have the ability for the final cut days, I would just leave it off. But if you want to have it on, feel free to go ahead and do that. It would just take away a little bit of work for you later on. Now, some of these don't have to stay on the whole time. Some of this is just initially, and I'll show you exactly what I mean by that as well. And now that you have the settings all set in place, we can officially go and create this extra profile. And now once you are have created the profile, if you go back to the area where you created the character, you can see now that there's two separate characters and I can just go back and forth and click on them. You always wanna make sure that all of your profiles that you plan on controlling are set up. And again, with how these settings work, you're probably gonna have to at least start out with all 31 teams. Now, yes, I know it's a lot of work. It really is, it's, it's sort of boring but it will pay off in the long run. I can promise you that. So what you're gonna wanna do on all of the 31 other teams that are in this franchise with you is when you create the profile, you need to go to weekly strategy. And this is of course, when you start, you're not gonna be able to do this for the CPU team. So you're gonna have to sim a week and then you can edit this portion of the franchise for the CPU teams because they auto already automatically did it when you joined after the fact. So again, it's create your original file, create all other 31 profiles, the way I showed you with the bears, then sim to week two, and then you'll see this screen where you can edit this. And the first thing you wanna do is you're gonna wanna go to weekly strategy. You're gonna wanna go over to player health. And you see how it says 99%. That's because we have progressive fatigue on. And that's something that we're going to talk about because that is a setting that you might want to change after this is all said and done. Now, look at how they have this practice intensity set up. Full pads, which means the most fatigue possible is going to be applied. 
you're also going to get the most XP. So XP, of course, if you're not familiar with the terminology, is the points you earn from weekly play and winning awards and all that stuff to upgrade your player. The more intensive your practice, the more XP your players can gain. And then also based off of where the reps are going, whether it's starters, split, or backups, is gonna determine who gets the majority chunk of that XP. So there's basically a set amount of XP, and it's either gonna go all to the starters, split between everybody, or all to the backups. Now you can handle this however you wanna handle this, but if you have progressive fatigue on, and if you leave the CPUs to do this, all starters are going to get hit with full pad practice intensity. And that is gonna cause this fatigue to dwindle all the way down into, I don't even know how low it can go, but I know it can get so low that half the starting unit will not even show up on the field on game day towards the end of the season. If you ever notice that when you're playing a franchise and you get to that like week 12, week 13 area, and all of a sudden you're just dominating everybody, no matter what the overall of the team is, and you're winning every playoff game and you're winning every Super Bowl, this is why. The CPU, when set to auto, leaves it on full pads and all starters all the time. So not only is the starters getting too fatigued, they're also the only ones gaining XP in practice. So the backups are not gaining anything out of it. It's an absolute horrible way to have the game set up, but this is how Madden has it set up. So you want to make sure you change this. So what I do is I leave it at full pads because that helps with gaining XP. It also helps with giving you storylines with injuries from practice. If you have it on half pads, you're not gonna get anywhere near the same XP, but you're also going to have way less chance of having injuries happen to your team through practice. So I always go full pads and then I change all of these to split. So that way the XP is going to both the starters and to the backups on the team to allow all players in the league to gain XP and get better throughout the years. If you don't do it this way, I'm telling you right now, two, three seasons from now, you're gonna have a bunch of nobodies behind starters and it's gonna seem like every team sucks. If you ever noticed that, all the teams sucking in the future, this is probably why. <laughs> Nobody outside of the starters will be getting decent enough XP because this is really the only spot they can get it. They're not playing in a lot of these games, so they're not gaining weekly XP. So if it's not a team XP gain, this is where they get it from. So you want to make sure you change it to split, regardless if you do full pads or half pads, that's up to you. But split is what you need to be at. So that way everybody is getting better. And then don't forget to hit R3 and do the same thing for the, for the offensive side. Go down here, move all of these to split. Now this is what you're going to see when you do the training. Look at the plus four you get for having the full padded practice. Now I think you only get plus two if you have half pad practice. So again, another reason to decide for yourself, what do you want? Do you wanna have game plan boosts? Do you wanna have extra XP or do you wanna make sure your team is more healthy and less fatigued? It's completely up to you. But this is what you can run into. You can see that Darnell Mooney has a broken finger. He's gonna miss at least this week, if not two. I've seen multiple week injuries out of practice. It's not unheard of. Sometimes you'll go without getting any injuries. Sometimes you'll get three of them in one practice. It sucks, but this is part of why I do it this way. I don't want to have everything be predictable. Now that you see practice available and your training is done, if you do this for all 31 other teams, so all teams you run through, you do practice for them like this, you can then go here to franchise settings. And if you want to do this for all teams, feel free. You can set weekly training to auto if you want. You can set it the practice reps to auto. But what I would do is I would just leave it on manual because it's going to automatically do it anyway when you simulate the week. So it's really not going to affect anything you have to do. Plus, it's going to give you the ability to go in and change it because about week 10 through 13, you'll see a huge shift in fatigue and you're going to want to change some of these teams to half pads instead of full pads for intensity to bring that fatigue back down. All right, so let's say that you set up all 32 accounts. You went and did practice for all of the teams. You have your settings set the way you want them. And now it's time to start playing some games, right? Yeah, it is. But there is still some extra things that you can do to even add to your experience. And that's some of the stuff that I implement on my Texans franchise. If you haven't already, go ahead and check that out. I think it's a pretty cool franchise. I'm having fun doing it and I'm going to be doing it for the long haul. I plan on having at least 100 episodes or 100 episodes or Madden 24 drops. I'm hoping one of the two happens. 
Now that we have it set up, I need to explain to you guys what is going to happen in this franchise file when you do these things, okay? So the first thing that you're going to see is that trade offers are going to go away. You're not going to get trade offers for any player. The trade block is going to be empty. There's just, there's no nobody to add them to the trade block. Now, if you want to go through and add them all manually for every team, go ahead. I choose not to do that. But again, that's your prerogative. And you're also going to notice that there is no more big trades happening. Not that the CPU really ever does trades to that extent anyway, but at least there is some that happen and that's going to go away once you, once you control all teams, even by turning it to auto, it still doesn't do it. So what I do is I use a Madden story generator. And I also comb through the salaries page for teams. So I'm just going to use the Cowboys for an example, because I know there's a, a player that you could uh, honestly do this with. What I'll do is I'll just cycle through all of the salaries once in a while. And I'll look for guys who are on final years of their deals or just guys that are maybe a little bit older or stuck. Like right now, Tony Pollard is stuck behind Ezekiel Elliott. In real life, apparently they're just refusing to allow Pollard to be the normal running back. I think that he should be the starter. I thought he should have been a year ago, but they're all obsessed with Ezekiel Elliott still, so he remains the starter. But what I'll do is I will basically trade this guy. So I'll take Tony Pollard. He's an 87 overall, and I will go through the teams. And I can find a team like the Panthers, who have a 76 overall. Yes, they have Chuba Hubbard, but they don't have a solid running back. And then I can go ahead and use my Madden trade calculator tool that I have. And, and I'll make sure that I do a good trade for the team. And I will just make trades for the CPU team. And since your profile is on all teams, any trade you offer is going to get automatically accepted, which is why you need to make sure that you're either okay with your bias showing or you use the trade calculator to determine that it is a fair trade and use that at your discretion. So I mentioned the Madden story generator and I mentioned the Madden trade calculator and I want to show you guys what that is. Now, I've showed this on a couple of other videos, but I want to make sure that I put it into this one since this is all about setting up your own franchise experience. Now, if you are interested in using these, I have both of them linked down in the description below. These are not mine. I did not create these. I found them on Reddit a couple of years ago and I have just held on to them ever since and I have been using them ever since. I can't thank the people who made them enough. A lot of work went into this and you'll see if you end up downloading and using this, this form. So here is the trade calculator. This is what I use to determine all trades, whether it's even for my team or if I'm trading for other teams to make sure that I'm doing an unbiased trade for this team or using it to make sense, right? So if it's like a, an emergency trade because this player refuses to sign, sometimes I will make the team that is trading away lose a little bit because the team knows that player wants out. Other times I will make teams overpay for some things because, or it's a huge part of what their off season is. So you can go ahead and, and critique the way you work this. Just use this as a base guide and I'll show you how this works. So team A, this is your team or whatever team you want it to be. It doesn't really matter. And then team B is the other team. For this portion, this is your draft picks. And then this down here is where you can add players in. So all you do is if you're trading a pick, you put it here. We'll just put one pick, one pick, one pick. And now you can see that there is a pick value put in here of 3000. This thing is designed with every pick and every overall player and age in here. <laughs> Don't ask me how they made this, but it does it all for you. And it is an incredible thing for you to do. So essentially what you do is you put your pick in. So let's say pick one, round one, first overall, right? And let's say we're trading a receiver. Let's say the receiver is an 80 overall, he's 26, he's got one year left, and we'll just leave it here, it's four to seven million, and let's say he's top 64. So you just follow this along, go and look at what their cap hit is, what is their yearly cap hit right now? It's between four and seven million, okay, that's what we're gonna leave here. If you go to the player screen, if you click on the player card, you're gonna see right here under ratings, on the top left under analysis that Kirk Cousins is ranked the number 10 quarterback. So I'm not going to use Kirk Cousins. I'm just giving you a guide as to where you can find for that specific situation. So now that we know what our player is, let's say he's a top 64 talent and let's say he has star dev. Now you know that his player value is 263.1. So now between that and the first pick, it is a grand total of 3,263 points. And that is a big chunk. So let's let's make this a little bit more believable. Hey, let's uh, let's do third round. All right, that's that's a little bit easier to see. So 
between the third round pick and this receiver that you're trading, you want to try and get back 730 ish points. Now, if we go over here and let's say you want to trade for a halfback, maybe the halfback is an 85, maybe the halfback is 27. They have a year remaining. Their cap hit is between, I will say four and seven for him. And we'll say he's a top 32 running back and he's star dev. Now you can see here that even for that running back, because of maybe the value and the age that they have, it's not up to par with what you're giving away. So you can add something. Maybe let's add a pick. Let's do a fourth round pick, first round or first pick in the fourth round. And we'll do pick number 97. So now you can see here by adding the fourth round pick, I have made this somewhat of a fair trade. I am sort of getting back more than what I'm giving up. And that is how you work the table. And that's it. You just make the decisions based off of that. And then down here, it'll tell you exactly what your trade looks like. It's just a really cool way to be able to make trades for your own team while controlling the other teams without risking the, the chance of you doing unfair trades subconsciously. Because nobody cannot be biased at something. It's impossible. You're always going to have your own thoughts that say, well, I should get this. This is a way to try to control that a little bit and to help you make more fair trades for all teams. And that brings us to the other sheet that I have listed, the Madden Story Generator. This is where all of the stories come from in your franchise. This is gonna add a whole bunch of stuff to your team. Now, I you don't have to touch any of this stuff down here. All of this stuff is basically like the odds and the percentages of everything. And you can see where that sits. You can adjust this if you would like to. All you have to do here is if you're using Microsoft Excel, just simply hit F9 and it will randomize this whole chart. If you are using Google Drives like me, just refresh your page like this and you'll see that all the teams just changed. Yep, there it is. And now once again, you have a fresh slate. And you just follow this down the list. So player arrested this year was one. It was the Dolphins starting linebacker. So their starting outside linebacker was arrested and he's out for one week. I don't usually follow the player arrested one, but it's here if you want to use it. Early round bust, there was one, it's the Lions second round pick. And it tells you exactly what to change on them. And essentially, this number here tells you how many to do. So the surprise late round start has a two here, that means you're gonna do Jets and the Lions, but you're not gonna to touch the Chiefs player. And then here for dedicated off season, there's a whole bunch of them. So it can max out, I think at like 15 or something, you're just gonna do the first eight. Also, if you are offended by the Redskins being in here, like I said, I've had this for years. It's just listed in here. There's nothing I can do about it. Sorry, <laughs> I, I can't change it. I'm not trying to ruin my whole sheet here because I'm trying to be politically correct or anything like that. Uh, it is what it is. So what you're going to do is you're going to choose on here and you're going to choose the Commanders player, the Broncos, the Seahawks, Cowboys, Commanders, <laughs> Patriots, and Colts, yeah, oh, and the Buccaneers. So that's the eight that you'll choose and then you just follow along. Third string center, first string fullback, third string middle linebacker. Some of these I do, some of these I don't, but if you wanna do them all, go ahead and then just follow this for all eight of them. And you can just go down the list. They have lazy off season, they have player demands trade. This is a good one to use. If you see a zero here, that means that nothing happens. You don't do it. You just leave it alone. This is a way to, to randomize it. You can't decide to do something. You just follow what the, what the sheet says. Hold out contract negotiation. So there's a whole bunch of people that don't wanna play for the team. And it gives you exactly what happens. Either provide extension to the player or whatever they are asking for, or the player will hold out for games. It's a very simple sheet to follow and it comes in really handy. So all of these are done at the beginning of the season. Once at the beginning of the year, that's all the times you do it. And it'll explain that on the sheet. But down here that has weekly season and mid season week eight only. So this is a dice roll. What that is stating over here is it only happens, for instance, for the young quarterback grasping playbook, roll a 10 or higher to increase awareness 15 and development by one, but this is only a five. So you would skip this line. Roll a two or lower to make starter. This is an eight, you would skip this line. So these are not guaranteed to happen every week, right? You're not gonna get that many to fall, but that is the point of doing it weekly. Every week you have a chance for a new story or a chance for no story at all. And then in the mid season, you do this one and same thing. You just follow along with, with what it says over here 
and just don't go against it. And you're going to give yourself random storylines throughout the entire franchise. Again, this is what I use for my own franchise that I'm doing here on the channel, the Texans franchise. And it, it just adds so much to the franchise experience. All right, so we are in the regular season now, just so I could show you something else before we end this thing out. Remember I said contract negotiations should be left on manual. This is part of that legwork. You are essentially gonna have to decide for every team who gets re-signed and who doesn't. Now, if you don't wanna do that and you want to let Madden do that for you, go right ahead and just leave that on auto. But if you do, I'm telling you, the entire league is gonna look different in one or two seasons because of how stupid that the this AI handles situations. They don't sign players they should, they lowball players they shouldn't. It, it's just so obnoxiously stupid. You'll see Justin Herbert and Patrick Mahomes in the same free agency. That's just not realistic in the slightest. And I hate that. It just doesn't make any sense. So I go on these teams and I do all of the contracts. And then once maybe all of them are done, I just let them all fall to free agency. But you'll go through. And another thing here, somebody actually pointed this out in one of my comments the other day. And it's a good thing to go off of. If you want to try and make things even that much more difficult for you, go ahead and only... Consider players with a certain high interest, like say Madison is the cutoff. If if they have an orange bar like this, maybe this is the lowest you'll go. But for a player like Irv Smith, his interest is so low, you don't even try to re-sign him because it's obvious that he just doesn't want to be here anymore. Now, does that suck? Yeah, it does sometimes. And sometimes it does make sense to go against that situation, especially if it's like a franchise player and it just so happens they have horrible motivations. Go ahead and do it. But to try and add more to your franchise, just follow that along. If they don't want to sign with you, just don't sign them back. That simple. So the contract negotiations are something you'll have to do. The trading before the trade deadline is something you'll have to take care of. And then the final thing that you'll probably have to do from time to time is you might have to draft for another team. But if you have a character on every single team, it's going to generate that every pick is a user pick. So you're essentially going to have to sim the, each pick until you get to the team you want to pick for. It can also be a good thing, though, because if you do that, you can also choose who that team picks. So you can avoid the team drafting a quarterback when they already drafted one the year prior or they have one on the roster already. You can avoid the team drafting two running backs because the game doesn't recognize that they already drafted a running back. You can do these things to try and make things more realistic for yourself as well. The one thing I forgot to mention when we were talking about training is once you have all of the teams set up on the way that you have them, so like full pad split, for instance, if you go here and just turn progressive fatigue off, you don't have to worry anymore. It's gonna keep the setting you had as full pad split, but it's not gonna track the fatigue, which means that you'll never have to worry about a CPU team being fatigued later in the playoffs, and you don't have to worry about going back on them and adjusting how they train. Now, if you have to do this for each individual team, of course, if you want to keep it on, but if you don't want to have to worry about that, just simply turn this to off and it'll turn off everybody's progressive fatigue and make things a little bit easier for you. I had to squeeze that last one in there because I, I should have mentioned it earlier, but I forgot to. So I just wanted to make sure I mentioned it. But honestly, guys, that is all I have for you. This might have been a little bit longer yet. I'm not sure how much of the stuff I said that I was able to cut out because I was rambling, but I hope that you guys can use this to have as much fun and immersion in this franchise as what I do. This game is not perfect. We all know that. There's nothing really immersive about the franchise settings, so I'm just hoping I can bring you guys a way to try and enjoy this game a little bit more than what is possible currently. If you liked what you saw, consider dropping a like and consider subscribing to the channel. I do more content like this anytime I feel that there's something I should give my knowledge in. And I also do a regular franchise, every Madden, a main one, and I run it the same way that I just explained to you guys in this video. So appreciate you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.